Welcome to the E4 Raiding Climb Part 2. This is a series where I play against my Twitch subscribers. Shout out to all of you, mad love. Uh, and I only play games with the white pieces and I play the move E4 to give you a comprehensive repertoire with different ideas. Last time we were 800, now we're 1000. And we are going to get things going against the following player. That is Shaderno F, hopefully in live chess. And we're ready to go. E4. Last time we saw a lot of E5, D5, a couple of Sicilians. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. All right. Last time I played a lot of Knight F3. This time I'm going to play Knight C3 to start things off. The Vienna system. The Vienna system. And last time I played G3 and Bishop C4. So I played Bishop C4. And then we got a copycat variation. I think that was the last video of the C Okay, so this time he plays like this. Now the other idea of putting a pieces out like this is that I want to play f4. I want to delay knight f3. So I'm going to play d3. This is again a brand new, completely brand new system. We have not seen this yet. And now f4. Right, so this is the whole point. This is the whole point. And it's kind of a weird move. I don't know what that does. I'm going to play knight f3. Castles. I haven't done anything complicated yet. And I'm not actually afraid of this move. Because there's a trick. Don't tell him though. Now normally what I like to do here is I like to just attack this bishop. This is this is my point. Queen takes. And now I, I just have two bishops. Now you don't need to be worried about knight d4 because you just drop back. I'm gonna finish my development. Development has been finished. Okay, my, my opponent's playing very fast. What do we know about a king castled on that side of the board? Very good. We know that we attack that king. I could have played b4. Oh, he is just light speed. b4, but I don't want him to take my bishop, so I'm probably just going to either play bishop b5 or bishop all the way back to a2. I just don't want him to take me, because I like my bishop. Bishop is a little bit better. No concerns about king safety. Somebody asking. King is completely safe. Completely safe on g1. Don't, don't worry. Now, this is my next idea. Um, that move is a counting problem. I think he doesn't realize that I, I have more attackers. I can also take here. But I don't understand. What if I just take with the pawn? What was his, what was his big idea here? You know, because counting at this level of chess is, is something that folks skip out on sometimes. Um, here's also what I predict. I think he wants to go here. But he knows that this is hanging, so he's going to take, and when I go here, he's going to blitz this move out and lose it. Watch. That's going to be my prediction. But hopefully he's not stream sniping. He's just thinking about it. I mean, at this point, it's already very dangerous, because the other byproduct of losing this pawn is uh, that the knight cannot go back to c6. So... You know, I don't think stream sniping helps here, and obviously, you know, if, if I get to play a subscriber and then I end up uh, losing because they are actually using some sort of assistance, that would be a bummer, but I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, queen f5. So if this, this, I cannot play b4 because he would just take it. Thinking g4 actually, but that looks a little bit risky. A little bit risky. Then again, if I play g4, he cannot defend this pawn anymore. So I actually think g4 is the best move. Because his queen can't go anywhere. I know, pushing pawns in front of the king is scary, but not when you take and take again and you just win a bunch of material. You know, three pawns is not the same thing. Wow! GM reigns with 10 gifted subs, making himself known to the Twitch and the YouTube community. Hey, YouTube, you guys are really missing out. Live streaming the show with such an incredible chat is uh is really awesome so if you haven't really considered that yet all right now we take and we are up two pawns they are both in the center he cannot take on d5 he's gonna have to bring his knight all the way back and then we can even take a third pawn and obviously white is completely winning despite having a slightly weakened king and that is exactly what i'm going to do he just does not have sufficient counterplay to meet the demands of the position Queens are off the board, and we've seen this throughout this series. We simplify the position, or we go on a big attack. Okay, that attacks that and that. The only way to prevent that is to take. I'm not thrilled with it, 
And when this pawn comes here, one is black attacking, black is attacking this. That is the door opening up. Don't forget that when pawns capture things, other pieces open up. I just play the very pristine move, King G2. And life is good. And life is good. And again, that knight, mm, I can take, but it is better here to push because I create two passed pawns and I disconnect the bishop from guarding that square. So b4 is on the way. Next opponent is Fuachna, F-U-A-J-N-A. -A. Make sure to get into live chess, please. I'm already thinking about the next opponent. That does not attack anything. We'll play b4. This knight is a goner. And uh, you can play b4. You can also bring this rook. I'm not necessarily playing all the best moves, but I'm playing what I think are the best moves and trying to show you different ways of not just playing e4, but also converting the middle game and the end game. That is the next opponent in the queue, followed by Space Oni, the only 1000s that I'm playing today. No, I'm also playing Timer Gunanta. Okay, I take, and the next move should come very naturally. What's the best move here? It's Rook B1, and it's not a question. You've got to go for the king. We fly in with the rooks. Rooks are absolutely crushing here on the seventh rank. This is easy peasy. We're going to take... And we're going to have to find a way not to just win with the rooks. Although I am threatening check, check, check. <gasps> oh, IMs can also make mistakes. Oh my goodness. I played so confidently that even I blundered. Wow. That's why you watch this series. Oh my goodness. I just played so confidently that he just didn't even see. I'll see, there you go. All right, I'm gonna take his last piece. <laughs> Got too excited. Okay, bishop comes back to f5, and we set up ladder mate again. This one I will get right, and you can choose, I'm gonna choose rook b8. Nice win there. Ooh, that was, that was not nice. I did not like that, but I did like the opening. Bishop c4, last time the copycat variation, why you should watch part one. Queen to g4, very good there, but against this, D3 followed by F4 is the way to go. Um, so H3, make this trade. This is not a problem because you just come back and the opposite side castling, just start an attack. That's what you should focus on. Okay. So nice win there for Team Gotham, uh, but it could have been better. That was, that was a suspect finish. That was a suspect finish. All right. E4. Let's go. Are we gonna, all right, another e5. Um, I feel like I've kind of exhausted all of this, you know? All right, let's go for d4, Goring Gambit. e4, e5, d4, and c3. This is another very aggressive Gambit system. I just wanna give you guys as many weapons as possible. You can take here with the knight, but I'm gonna go triple Gambit. I'm gonna go bishop c4, giving up yet another pawn, and this could be very vicious. This could be very vicious if black doesn't know what they're doing. You gotta be real careful. The thing is, in this climb, you don't know how aggressively I'm going to be playing. That's the thing. I could play very aggressive, I could play more positional. And... Knight f6 is incorrect. Uh, I think it's because I go here. But at the same time, I have this move, and I can also just take this back. Uh, let's think about this. I don't actually think it's this. But I don't remember why. And I want to teach you guys to be responsible. You know, maybe I just play knight c3. Maybe I play queen b3. Oh, chat, what do I do? Just kidding, I'm not asking for advice. Let's go e5. Let's see if it works if I play e5. e5 is bad for a certain reason, but I'm not going to say the reason out loud. And then my opponent's just going to be really confused. Because obviously they're listening. Um, and they're going to be like, why is it bad? And he's going to go, oh, it's because of knight g4. It's bad because I can play knight to g4. Right. I'm going to be like, psych, and I take, so. But the real way I should play this is just to ca castle my king very quickly. That is not a bad move at all. So he doesn't let me take, uh, and I think, but the, 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 it is a slight inaccuracy because I can play queen e2, blocking the pin, and his knight has no move. Oops, his knight has no move. There is one thing that black has to play in this position, and that is not it. I'm actually not even going to take that because then I would be 
giving away my e-pawn. Instead, I'm just gonna move my knight. This gambit is super aggressive. You're trying to develop your pieces as quickly as possible. Um, and that move was this. That is what my opponent should have been looking at throughout. Um, it's actually, I think, the, the whole reason why e5 early is not so great, because you can play something like d5. Uh, but early on, if your opponent doesn't know that d5 is the critical response, like right now, d5 it doesn't, it loses. d5 loses, because I have this. Um, but obviously we see a lot of these gambit systems, you have to be very precise with your calculation, you have to be aggressive in the right way, uh, and it's not, it's not so simple. And yeah, unfortunately that is a reality of the situation. Maybe I'm already, you can develop a piece, but I'm already looking to do some serious damage with knight d5, but I will just develop. I now have four active pieces for the cost of two pawns. Knight d5 looks very nice. Oh, bishop g5 also looks very nice. Actually, bishop g5 might have been... Slightly inaccurate. Maybe, maybe he'll see. Maybe not. Bishop g5, f6, I just can take and also play knight d5. Yeah, I mean, every move is creating a threat. It is, it is very dangerous here. Knight d5 is devastating, and if my opponent plays queen e6, I am threatening this. And if the queen moves off the file, I have pawn takes with check. So this, this, this gambit system, just looking to develop pieces super quickly, can be another weapon you use against e4, e5. I mean, we're making e4, e5 look like a joke at this point, but you have to be tactically sharp, and you have to look for the attack. So this one's called the Goring Gambit, Danish Gambit, Goring Gambit, whatever it is. Um, but e4, e5 is by far the most popular. Um, I can take the queen, it takes mine, but then I can also just take like this. Also give a check, king d8. I think taking the, uh, the, the free knight is the way to go here. Mmm, nice idea, actually. Queen e5, that's very cool. Um, except for the fact that it's checkmate by force. But that is brutal, my goodness. King checkmated in the center of the board. Um, and I, and I, I did have to play knight takes c7 second. If I played knight c7 first, it's not mate because the bishop is blocked. But if I play queen e5, fe5, knight c7, I mean, wow. That is a vicious display of this gambit. And there's not much more to add. I mean, I can give you the best move. The best move against it is d5. Black has to look for d5. You've got to give the pawn back so that I waste the move taking it, and then you get development as well. You need to develop your pieces very quickly when you get hit with the Danish Gambit. Bishop d6, knight f6, etc. Um, that is the way you play against it. Space Oni. Here we go. Let's, 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 let's get ready to rumble. e4. I mean, at this point, anybody playing e5 is very brave. Sicilian. We haven't seen this in a while. So, I played knight c3 against the Sicilian. This time I'm going to play the open Sicilian, because I haven't played that yet. So d4, knight f3 and d4, looking for a trade. And now what is my opponent going to play? Maybe he plays g6, g6 is dragon. Wow, early e5. This is called the Kalashnikov. This is called the Kalashnikov, and basically uh, you create some dark squared weaknesses, but you want to play knight f6, bishop c5, bishop b4. What I recommend for people who are total beginners here uh, is, if you'd like to... Just, you can start with taking on c6, and then black basically has to play the move d5. This is a very interesting system. You can also just rotate the knight back to b3. That's what I'm going to do. It's not the most critical, like, it's not the most critical move, but let's see what my opponent does. I'm going to develop my knights, then I'm going to move my bishops out and castle. Okay, that is a good move. Pinning me and threatening knight takes e4, right? So bishop d3. I'm just trying to make natural developing moves. I'm not trying to play super cutting edge theory. I wanna see how my opponent plays the Sicilian uh, and things to look out for. Okay, now the bishop is definitely gonna have to be, you have to pin this knight. You have to pin this knight. This is actually a very unpleasant pin if it's not defended by the bishop. So knight b5 is the main line, but again, if you're a thousand, you don't need to know that knight b5 is the main line. You need to know how to play chess and how to challenge certain openings. So let's play bishop h4. In the next Sicilian, I will play b3. I will play the b3, and then I will play the c3 Sicilian, which is a couple of different ways of challenging the Sicilian. 
Uh, in part one, I play primarily closed Sicilian. Now in part two, I'm playing open and whatever else we get if anybody else plays Sicilian. H3 is not a bad move. My opponent's getting me away from the pin, but weakening the king. So now that they've weakened the king, we have something to play for. Yes. And then I obviously will tell you all about the weapon A3. However, the last time I made a Gotham guide and I plugged my course, a couple of people were very, very upset. So, Okay. He can still take... Mm. Okay, let's play knight d5. Knight d5 hits two things and the queen. I mean, I'm assuming he's going to take. So knight d5. If takes, then pawn takes, and I'm attacking the knight. I just don't want him to go here. The hardest part about chess is figuring out how you develop in the middle game and how you improve your position. So I take with the pawn. Now his knight is under attack. He can move it here, 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 or here. I got to tell you, I think that's the best move, but it's very difficult to play a move like that. Then you got to look at how to weaken the pawns. That is definitely a move I am considering. That is something that, oh, that I don't like as much. Okay. Can I trap this bishop? I play a3. Bishop, take, here, 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 here. You think it's going to happen? What do you guys think? That bishop, you've got to identify what pieces have limited squares, right? This bishop cannot go this way. It has to go here. And this trade is good for me. It's good for me because I'm the only guy with a bishop. I'm the only guy on the board with a dark squared bishop. Not, 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 excuse me, not just the bishop. Oh, he thought, oh no. Setting up a tactic. You always look for checks. Discovered attack on the queen. And that is game over. And that is what you, that is how you avoid mistakes. You look for checks. You look for checks for the opponent. And that was not a free pawn. It was me setting a little bit of a trap. And um, now we will convert this with relative ease by taking the rook. And taking the pawn, the bishop and the queen do a lot of damage. So my opponent actually had a very good opening. He played the opening very well. I will say his Sicilian was on point. Let's chase the king over here. And now, you know, don't get tunnel vision. The queen's not the only piece that can play. You can also play with f4, rook f3, rook g3, or rook h3, breaking apart the, the king's positioning. It's not a bad move. I'm going to take to weaken the king a bit more. Takes, check, here, h3 is mate, and queen h3. When he takes, he opens up the h file. Plays like this, check, h3 mates, as well as rook f4, rook h3, and queen h3, all checkmates. Which one do you like more? I think I like h3 checkmate. So we, we won very quickly from this position, right? From this position, which looks weird, because the position should not be falling apart to this extent for my opponent. But knight d5 was the big problem. That was the big problem. Because once we brought the knight forward and offered this exchange, and then this little move a3, now you can play queen h5, but a3 is also good. And I, and I just saw that from a distance, I could set up this idea. Because if you get a puzzle like this on chess.com, you're going to play bishop h7 and queen d6. You're not even going to think, you're just going to auto play it. So then you need to st now start setting that up from a distance. I saw that from four moves away. When you're 1,000 or 1,100, 1,200, whatever rating you are watching this, you will see it, hopefully, from this position. e6, and then bishop h7, okay? That's the difference. All right. Timer Gunanta, please get into live chess. You are up next. e4. Playing a lot of people from Indonesia and Poland today, I feel like. d6. Oh, a new opening. Those of you watching part one or parts three, four, this is the first time at least we've had this so far. 
So against this, you should put two pawns in the center. This is two pawns in the center, nothing complicated. And when they attack your pawn, you should play knight c3. You should delay knight f3 because you need to defend. Okay, he's playing like a king's Indian setup. Now, the most challenging way to play against this uh, is to castle queenside. When you see king's Indian arriving, the best way to play is to castle queenside. You should play f3 first. Then find gold somewhere just twitched. But you play f3 because if you play bishop e3, they're going to play knight g4. And they're going to hit your bishop. So I play f3 with the intention to play bishop e3, queen to d2, and long castles. That is one way. Now, e5 is not a bad move, but it's too weakening, and I'll show you why. You should take. Then you can take the queen, and this is already extremely dangerous for black. These two moves don't go together. Black needs to stay focused, and now you pin. That's really the problem, is that white gets a very quick lead in development and long castles with a check. There's also in the future the prospect of doing some serious damage to the position with moves like knight b5, knight d5, etc. So white has a lead in development. We're not completely winning yet, but we will be in a second. Don't worry. Bishop c4 against the king's Indian is a London. No, the London is a queen's pawn opening. Entirely different setup. Entirely different opening series. Oh, bishop f6 followed by knight d5. That's an idea. At the same time, we also have just a very natural developing move, bishop c4. Right? So, very nice idea. bring this bishop back to e3 if i take on f6 i just realized i could have taken on f6 and then took in took in taken on f7 um i was just i was uh, unfortunately distracted by some uh by a uh, degenerate in the chat and i had to pop in and give my two cents see this is the good thing about youtube i only see comments afterward but i'm too tempted when i'm streaming uh to to clap back unfortunately so knight c6 Again, we see this knight d5 idea, which we saw in the last game. Um, but is it good here? Takes, pawn takes. Also knight b5. Knight b5 is an interesting idea. Knight d5 is an interesting idea. I'm going to go knight d5. I feel like it... Just seems like a bit more, you know, to the point. He takes with the knight, take with the bishop. Um, don't forget, he can't. Ca oh no! That used to guard this. No, that makes my life so much easier. Well, now I'm up a piece, but hopefully he doesn't resign. I really hope he doesn't resign. Because you still need to practice converting a winning position in this, in, in this kind of game. Was the fork not better? It's defended. Take the bishop. I'm gonna go, go trade this guy off. Actually, I see a free pawn. So bishop c5 is good, but free pawn is better. And now I'm going to take on g6 and play bishop f5 check. One of these few moves as well. Plays this, that's not, a, that's not a bad move at all. Okay, let's play bishop c5. We're just trying to trade off pieces now to get it into an endgame. But his opening was good, he just made one move blunders. That's, that's it. I almost didn't want to take. I felt like his opening was so strong I should have, you know, respected it and... How is that a trade? Um, just it just is. 
I don't, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Go here. He can't take me because of the pin, so that's what we do. Okay, now let's bring the bishop back and make another trade. What happened to my hair? I'm a Jewish man. That's what happened to my hair. Alright, let's take this again. So now we've traded all the pieces. And I would like to activate my rooks. Now I could do that in a couple of ways. Um, how do you recommend trading to a beginner who is scared of endgames? A lot of beginners feel attached to all their pieces. Well, let's try to learn how to win up a piece in an endgame. Bring this knight to its best possible square. Either d5 or f5. Right, so we're going to jump into f5. Where it's going to put pressure on d6 and h6. I also need to activate my rooks and coordinate them. So for example, he's going to do this because it attacks my pawn. Or not. I'm going to play knight f5. But don't forget that this pawn protects this. So when he... Okay, he doesn't do it. But now he attacks me here. I'll move my rook up one square and then play this. He might think this, this takes f5. That's not wrong. Usually. Except in this case, it's a fork of a rook. And I can take like this. But usually, it's actually not a bad idea. Because you will win the knight. So, right? And so, that's sort of the, uh, that's sort of the point. I'm bringing my second rook to the party. Now I'm attacking this d6 pawn. Um, you, you, you can make your life a lot easier. Okay, he's just gonna take. If you learn to simplify in the right way. So when he plays king f7, now I bring my rook and I take everything. The less pieces he has, uh, the less chance that he will ever make a comeback. He's using these two pawns looking to break through, but two pawns are not going to beat two pawns. It's just not going to happen. Um, that is not threatening anything. Still, you know, if my king is here, that's a mate. That's not mate because he goes here. I'm going to take on a7, uh, and then I will use these three pawns. Okay, you can push your pawns, but one of the reasons you should always look for checks is that they appear out of nowhere in the other position. Knight here was not scary. In this position, knight here wins a rook. So that is why continuity in chess is so important. You should always be looking at the checks just to make sure they're not winning anything. It does win the h-pawn, but now it wins the rook because he allowed it. And the easiest way to win this is for him to just resign and for me to not even have to play this. For a win but obviously the easiest way to win this avoid stalemate because i have to tell you let me just hypothetically create a position let me just play like h3 like look this this is stalemate right this is stalemate because he's got no legal moves with any piece and somehow my knight covers his king's only moves and the rook covers. So you shouldn't really resign in a position like this if you can try to create a stalemate by sacrificing your pawns. It would be my responsibility to make sure his king has legal moves at all times. Okay? So Sessi evaluates this as 0, 0, 0. Um, there you go. Uh, all right. We are moving up to Mercury, who is 1155. Please get into live chess. Very nice, so far smooth sailing. And this, this guy's from Finland. An e4 on the board. c5. As promised, I said I would play the b3 Sicilian. The idea of the b3 Sicilian is to put the bishop on b2 and put this bishop either on c4 or b5, depending on how he sets up. If he plays d6, I play bishop b5 and trade this knight, or bishop for the knight, I should say. Then I take, and we are going to play like this. We are going to play knight c3, queen e2, and long castle. This is the whole point when they play d6. I mean, he played, ooh, but he's giving me some stuff. That's the whole point of this bishop. Now I play knight d5. Oh, this could get very bad because, yeah, the thing is that now I take, and his pawn structure is ugly. His pawns are damaged. He plays pawn takes. 
I will continue with Queen e2 and Long Castles. It's not the end of the world, but it does transform the position a little bit. My bishop on b2 is super strong. And the other thing is, when you castle queenside and they castle kingside, you're going to start h4, h5 ideas. We've seen this throughout. I am constantly searching for how to attack my opponent. And he blunders the pawn immediately. That is why maintaining continuity is so important. I play bishop f6, and now I'm just up a pawn. So he also tried to castle queenside, and in doing so, blundered a pawn. When did I start playing sidelines? Well, the thing is, the open Sicilian, which I played last game, is a little bit too complicated. Sidelines doesn't mean bad, it just means, you know, uh, a system you know better than your opponent. That's what chess is all about. You try to find that advantage. I guess I can just castle queenside now. I do have to be a little bit mindful of the fact that this bishop could be a target. So, for example, if, I play, if he plays queen e6, I have to go back, but he can't take. He might not know that. But I don't think he can take my pawn. Maybe he can with certain tactics, but I think that might be his best move. We'll see. If he trades, I'll take it and I'll be fine. My king's a little weak, but I'll put it on b1. Is it sometimes recommended to give up the doubled pawn? Sometimes, but not like the way he just did it. That's just a free pawn. So had he gone here, I would have just taken. But since he goes here, I can take since I'm up material, but my bishop is just better than his bishop. So you can trade when you're winning, but in this case, I can just go back to b2 and... Um, what it is um, no questions are answered guys I'm just not not answering every single question but I'm trying to answer as many as I can at least specific to the position so now I will look for d4 it's a closed position because I have 8 pawns so I have all my pawns I'm going to develop play d4 but Levy you do this in the open Sicilian yeah but on move 3 I will do a d4 rating climb if this one is successful. Yes, I will. Shy Town Chess. So, some of you are getting shout outs on YouTube. So, Shy Town Chess, GM Reigns, Scared Enigma. Who else? Any VIPs in the chat? Something you don't get on, you know, you can't get a VIP badge. Um, that's a big mistake because I just take this pawn. And yeah, you can take, but you cannot take. Of Gallo, Gremlin, Tyler Matthew. Shout out to the VIPs. And yeah, he has this problem. He never castled. I mean, it's move 16. He's not castled. I'm castled. I'm ready to fight. All my pieces are in the game. He never castled, and he blundered upon early. The B3 Sicilian is quite interesting. It's quite interesting. It, it's a very, very tricky and annoying system to play against with black. Again, because it's Sicilian. You gotta think about it from their perspective. Sicilian players take. Sicilian players get a certain setup 90% of the time. When you play the B3 Sicilian, you cut that down to like 2%. Right? So rook d6, I can take, I can take. However, I'm not going to be the guy that takes. I'm going to reinforce my rook with the pawn and the other rook. And uh, knight can jump, knight can jump. At this point, 10 different things win for white because white has uh, a three pawn advantage. Plays rook f8. Now I could take. Uh, that might be the simplest. Let's just play that out. It's not the best. I like my rook's activity. I shouldn't be trading it. But let's just do this for the instructive value going to probably take with the queen. The king is a little too bold putting the king in the center. This is my next move no matter what. Thinks for a while. Okay, I give him a check. Now we go for... No, not that. Don't go for this. Go for a queen trade. In, just go for a queen trade. Three pawn advantage is good enough to make it knight in eight pawns versus bishop in five. The only way he cannot trade queens is moving the queen to one of these three squares. Actually, this one too. Forgot about that. But my, my next move is here. I mean, the pinned piece, a lot of people get tunnel vision. They start to fight with the queen. That's not bad. As long as you're taking something, queen f8, queen f7. The only thing you need to really be mindful of here is your king's safety, because you could blunder a perpetual check, but that doesn't exist here. I mean, this is my next move, and then I'm going to take the bishop, get it into a pawn endgame, and, well, 
Now, putting pawns on dark squares is good. Putting pawns on dark squares is good because he only has king and a bishop. Mm, I guess he wants this. I'm not really worried if he plays that, actually, because I have check. Yeah, and that's why you should always look for check. That's it. Takes. Uh, and king and pawn endgame is easily winning if you have three extra pawns because you bring your king. This king has to constantly stay monitoring this pawn. And this should be its guard. And the king cannot come forward to take both because the second it does, I run away. Now I am shielding the king from ever making any progress. And his pawns are going to run out of moves. His pawns here are going to run out of moves. His pawns here are going to run out of moves. Like that. Now they can't move. If here, in peasant. If here, I take. He can play b4. It's not a bad move. But then I play king c5 and I take his pawn. King activity in the endgame. And negating the movement of the pawns. Three. I'm just going to play one move until his pawns run out of turns. That's it. F3. I want his king to go back so I can push forward. He officially has no more pawn moves. When he goes back, I can either bring my king or just play e6. I actually can play e6 even now because of a trick where I put my king there. Rather than doing anything complicated, let's do it this way. And while I can play d7, just be careful not to stalemate anybody. If he plays here, I go here and I make my queen. I make my queen. Well, I don't have to make a second queen, but maybe for instructional value for beginners, I will make a second queen. You need to be careful, no stalemate. <sighs> I can take. take all right just started looking at something that mate that might be made in one that might be made in one sometimes available when the king is kind of awkwardly boxed in by pawns the pawns take these squares away and this is the, the, the box like this. And that is that. Mercury, good game. Interesting Sicilian variation. The next person that I'm playing is lose is improve. You will lose, so hopefully you do improve. Uh, and you trade off the light squared bishop for the knight and try to go quickly for queenside castling. Now, if my opponent didn't allow this, uh, then I would have played like this and like this. All right, so that's what I would have done. All right, loses improved. Just get into live chess. Thank you. Smooth, 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 smooth. E4. Sicilian and E5 throughout this game. Uh, all right. Let me play B3 again, or let me play the Alapin, and then I will play A3. So the Alapin Sicilian, you play C3 and D4. Let's see what he does. Oh, this is so bad. He's giving me the center. No, but this is already lost for black. You can't play like this. Oh, no. No, black is already lost. No. No. Move six. Your knight is trapped. You need to put pawns in the center. You need to put pawns in the center. No. The Alapin Sicilian is not that scary. It shouldn't be winning this quickly. C3 and D4. Just take. Ah. Now I just develop. Right. Hopefully loses improve. Will improve indeed after this game. I'm just to piece up. This is not. No. Still no pawns in the center. Ah. This is the. You can't just put knights in the center like this. They will be attacked. Will be attacked. Oh no. Okay, that's a good move. It does attack my pawn. Let's see if he sees that I 
and doing both. Maybe he'll just castle and forget. I mean, I could have also played bishop f4, but I just wanted this. Okay, he does see it. Very nice. Uh, I'm going to take, and I'm going to play the move e6. Similar diagonal trick as last game. I really hope he doesn't play here. This opponent needs to go practice tactics. That is what they have to do. Um, bishop b5 check. Just pick up some, some material and... All right, Sicilian was played. Let's just trade some pieces and castle. How to practice tactics by practicing tactics. <laughs> That's the best advice I can give you. Okay, I am going to give my opponent a shot at redemption. I'm going to give my opponent a shot at redemption. What is my opponent going to do here? I'm giving him a pawn, yes. I'm giving my opponent a pawn on d5. He can take my pawn on d5. All right. That is definitely a little bit dangerous for me. He's really thinking about taking this pawn or moving his queen or playing queen d I mean queen d6 and queen f4 check or f6 so my queen can't escape. No! No, no, no. This was winning. That's why you always look for checks. Because rook hits the queen. Now I will escape. I was giving him redemption opportunity. That's why you always look for checks because that would have been a discovered attack, rook on queen. And if you really just had looked for a check there, even as a hypothetical, you would have realized that this is possible and you would have won the queen. Now, it actually still was complicated because my next move would have been takes. And now, if he was stream sniping, he would have been a little bit distracted by my verbal comments, but... <laughs> so, I could have taken this, but I'm trying to see if he will see this pin. That's what I'm waiting for, because obviously this is not a threat. If you look straight down the board in either direction... Wait, okay, now he sees check a little late, but got it. Got it. I just moved to the corner. Now I'm now I'm safe. Okay, so I can give a check. And also move my knight. I can take a pawn. I'm gonna take this pawn for free. Thank you, Shaitan. Appreciate that. I, I do think this is good content. What do you guys think? You think it's good content? My rook can go backwards though. I can also give a check, but my rook can go back. I think oh and wow, he just he got he was tired of it. He was tired of it. He did not want to continue anymore. Um, now, winning from here would have been just, I would have gone straight for his king. Queen e8, you know, rook e7. The same guy on chess.com has been challenging me now for, the, for over an hour. An hour. Every time I finish a game, the same guy on chess.com has been sending me a challenge. I actually have to commend him. Because it's like some serious dedication. You would think that the guy would get the message, but... All right, Aloni B, here we go. Israel, 1200, the first 1200 of the day. Another E4, E5. I played the Goring Gambit last time. What should we play this time? What have we not played yet? <gasps> I know, the King's Gambit. The King's Gambit. Longayo, thank you for the 500 bits. And Sinus, I do see all your bits. We have not yet played the King's Gambit. There's a lot of ways to make e4, e5 more exciting. Ooh, that's not a good move. Um, knight c3, knight f3 now. Uh, declining the Gambit is actually known to give white a very good position. And this could become a Vienna Gambit. Now it is a Vienna Gambit decline. That's what it is. It's a Vienna Gambit declined. 
Normally bishop c4 is the move, but actually in this position, bishop b5 is a little bit better to destabilize the position. So I want to take this and then take this pawn in the future. So that looks something like takes. Don't take right away because your king needs to be stabilized. He will take with the bishop. And we saw this exact idea of taking from the b3 Sicilian, stabilizing the center first, then castling. Okay. No. Actually, at the time of recording part two, we're not, part one is not on YouTube yet, but for you guys seeing it, it is, of course. Um, I want to take, take, take. Does that work now? Now it's better. Let me show you what I mean. If I take this pawn, now, whoa, 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 buddy. What are we doing? We want me to take again so you get your bishop out? You're really daring me to do that? I'll take it. I mean, I don't, I don't see it. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see it. Can't go here. How do you get something to f2? And just the, Oh, that would lose. Why would that lose? You always have to look for checks. Give a check. That's why you always have to look for checks. That's the problem. So let me just... I castle, he checks me. First of all, why am I castling kingside? I can also just castle queenside, right? Play a move like bishop g5 first. I'm gonna castle them. I think I'm actually safe. This is not a scary threat. Um, if queen h4, I just take. He plays bishop here, I can block with the pawn, which is important because if you play king h1, you get hit with knight f2 with the bishop here. So he sacrificed the pawn for some sort of attack, but as long as I get to go here, he will not have any attack. All right, so my king is pretty safe. The good thing for me is his bishop is completely out of the game. Wow, that is an aggressive move. Let's think what to do. Should we take that with the bishop? Oh, it looks a little bit dangerous. So if I play bishop g5, I hit his queen, but he has a nasty trick there, and I really wonder if he sees it. Let's see if he sees it. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't. Oh, no, he does. No, he doesn't. He does, he doesn't, he does, he doesn't. I thought he had this. But that doesn't work. Because if I take, yeah, he plays it, but it actually doesn't work. Because even though he gets my bishop, at the end of it, I'm attacking his knight two times. That's the point, is that he forgot that I can just take his knight afterward. It looked like it worked, but sometimes you just gotta call their bluff. Right? You just gotta go... Right? You just gotta take, and then... Now, he also could have played queen d4, but then I just play king h1. And if he jumps in, I take. Then I get two pieces for the rook. And that's good. Like, that's good. You should know that. Right? So, this is winning for me. Let's put the knight in the center of the board. Again, I'm happy making this trade. The good thing for me is his king cannot castle at all. And as long as his king does not get out of the center, I will win very fast. I will play this move, and then he will be forced to resign, unfortunately. Um, okay, so I can move my king, or I can even block. My queen is protecting. We play queen takes. Let's activate our rook. Check. Thank you for the 14 months. Uh, I want to get there. How do I get there? Let's offer a queen trade. Nah, we're attacking. I've been telling you guys not to trade pieces when attacking. Let's go queen g7, attacking this guy. All right, so queen g7 is better than offering a queen trade. I mean, we, we have such an aggressive queen might use it to do some more damage than just trading off the material.
This is easily winning because you take... Oh, I check. Only thing you need to be careful about in a position where they only have a queen is perpetual. Whoa, that's not a good move. Okay, check. Now I can probably check it down. Use a poker term. Check. That was not a good check. That would have lost the queen. Check. He just goes here. This is the simplest. And... Game is a little bit boring. I'm 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 not able to provide the same level of excitement here. I do have an extra rook and an extra knight. Yeah, we'll just take. Let's just take. Let's take and make a second queen. That's the easiest. He only has pawns left. Let's just b4, a4. I'm not gonna move my rook or my knight the rest of the game. Let's make a queen. Make a second queen. Team it up with your rook and knight. Deliver a ladder checkmate. Manage your time. D6. Now I'm going to try to check every move until I mate him. Check, check. Okay, he allowed me to mate with the knight. That's nice. He could have played king h6, and then I wouldn't have been able to check him until I mate. But that was a king's gambit that he did not accept. He declined it, and that allowed me to play this bishop b5, and it kind of became a Vienna gambit uh, declined. And then I traded, solidified my center, and he lost the central pawn early. Like, I could have castled, kept things solid. And here, the hardest thing is to not play a move like h3. Because the way you guys will blunder, and that same person is challenging me again. This is like the seventh time. This guy is sending me a challenge after I finish a game. It's very impressive. Bishop g3 check here would have been devastating. And um, I will save the king's gambit for the future because the guy didn't play the most critical option, which is d5. Um, I played the scotch in part one. I will play it again for sure. For sure. But for now, I have a few more people. I have Gorkolas, Manuft, Energetic, and Letter Pico. The last four people of the queue. Gorkolas, please get into live chess. For your game. Easy peasy. Spanish player. Let's go e4. Are we going to get a Spanish from a Spanish player? The French. The French. Okay. I recommend the two knights French. The two. Oh, he plays e6, b6. Uh oh. I know a little bit about e6, b6. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, against e6, b6, you should take the full center. That's what you should do. Uh-oh, he's using my own opening repertoire. No, this is not what I teach. What is... Maybe he's... I hope he's not using my repertoire. This is bad because you just play e5. I mean, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing this. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? What is this? What is this? Okay, I take and I play bishop here. I mean, I'm just going to get my pieces active. That's not playing this right. You're supposed to play bishop b4. Um... So you can castle, but I am going to do something where I just develop and I see where he's going to castle. You can castle, but as you get stronger, you don't always have to castle first. That's actually a good move. I like that move. So normally what you do here is you try to hold your center together. So you play something like c3. Taking is not bad, but as you get stronger, you'll know that solidifying your center like this with c3 is a little bit better. Um... White has a slight advantage here because of more space and more development. 
Oops, I'm not going to take my own king. I'm waiting for him to potentially commit. Take with a knight. But let me take with a pawn. Take with a pawn. D5 allows a check. There's blocks. Okay, now my original intention was to maybe castle this way. I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. Just going to castle short. This bishop is very passive. He needs to get castled quickly or he's going to get in some serious trouble. Okay. So he's two moves away from castling. Play here, he just goes a6. How do I put pressure on him, not let him castle so fast? Queen a4. Here's my idea. It should be seven, five. And I just realized that's not that great of an idea, but it's okay. And queen a4 was a bit too much. Oh, no, 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 that's very bad. Why is he not playing this? That's very bad. Okay, let's play rook c1. Actually, bishop b5 now is not even though. Open file, this cannot be a bad move. If he plays this, it's gonna get, oh, no. No, but now bishop g5, look. Light squared pawns, dark squared weaknesses. Now we attack the queen. I've been thinking he's gonna play bishop e7, so we could play bishop b5 and bishop c6. He's gonna re really telling me he's gonna put his queen on b8. Come on. No. Just play bishop e7. What is this g6, bishop g7 stuff? Come on. I don't like that. Takes. That's a little dangerous. Oh no. Oh, no, 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 that's why you need to castle. And for those of you that want to learn how to stop your opponents from castlings, ah, I now have four pieces that are going directly for the knight, the bishop and the... Yes, it looks like you're out of danger, but now bishop b5... <laughs> Okay, he finally castles, but it's going to come at the cost of one rook. This was not good. If this guy is a, is a patron of my e6, b6 course, I do not teach this move. This is chapter one. How are you going to tell me that you purchased my course for black and you don't know chapter one? I'm disappointed. Let's play bishop c8, which offers a trade of rooks. You have to play bishop b4 in that position. Rook c7, completely fine move as well. Completely fine move as well. Now I bring in the queen. My rook is protecting my king. That is a check and the queen. And no, 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 no. He missed all my ideas. No, I'm not happy with that game. I mean, 1200s, you're supposed to fight me. Don't respect me. Don't respect me. If you're going to play e6, b6 setups, whether or not you buy my opening scores, you've got to know the ideas. The ideas are to bring out the bishops and hit the e4 pawn with the bishop using the pin. Again, we've seen this throughout parts one and two, people just putting knights in the center and getting attacked. We saw it in the Alapin Sicilian game as well um, with c3 and d4. Like, right, that's... That guy, that guy also didn't put any pawns in the center and also got into a very difficult position. Manuft, you are next. Manuft is not online. Manuft, you have 20 seconds to reconnect while I have to keep talking because you're not online. Manuft is not in live chess. Manuft is still not in live chess. So I will have to skip to Energetic 26. Thank you, Energetic, for being in live chess. Manuft, you will be played against next. You were not in live chess. Haro Khan. So last time we played knight c3 and queen f3. We played an exchange Karo Khan. This time let's play... The hillbilly attack. Bishop c4, d5, and bishop b3. The hillbilly attack. And queen h5. 
This is a very fun system, which is a twist on the very well-known Scholar's Mate. The idea being that we just, yeah, that's what I want. I want him to block in his bishop. Now I play knight c3, he's blocked in his bishop, and my opening was a success. I play queen h4, and I chill. Now he blocked in his bishop, and I am happy. Take. He can take. I will take with the queen. I know he has a discovery, but I'm not going to fall for that. I think g6 is the best move, yes. d4 maybe? It's the best move here. Um, maybe knight f3 is also good. It, oh, no, 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 this was stupid by me. But he didn't see why it was stupid, luckily. Um, okay, now I play d4. It was stupid because he could have taken... Played his knight to c5. Now my move d4 stops knight c5. Uh, just developing here, my queen's on an active square. His bishop is super passive. And he already committed his king, so I'm going to try to attack his king on this side with moves like c3 and bringing my bishop back to attack the h7 pawn. How many variations approximately? It's all right here. There is a table of contents. My whole point of uh, of making openings courses is to make them easily digestible and easy to understand. The videos are about two to three hours. The variations are simple and straightforward, not bogged down with tons of theory. Because you could sell a course for hundreds of dollars with you know dozens and dozens of variations, but it's not easily digestible content. And that's what chess should be. I'm gonna put my queen back on h4. So I know he has discovered attacks, but they don't do anything. I just play something like queen g3 or queen h5 or queen g4. Um, also, I'm sorry, did I miss a cheer? I missed the cheer. Somebody cheered a thousand bits. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'm in YouTube mode. Let's take on c5. He takes... Um, I can castle, but I also have this move bishop g5, which puts some more pressure on him. And I will probably castle because I cannot castle this way. It's legally not an option. I will castle. So, ah, all right. You guys ready for something spicy? Here's something spicy. You could take my bishop. I'm sacrificing a piece. It's not the best, but... I want him to take me, so I can put my knight here and have a constant threat of queen h7 mate. That's what I want. I want a constant threat of queen... I don't care if he takes. Because he cannot move his knight. And since he cannot move his knight, I will dedicate the rest of the game trying to get the knight out of there. You know why? He's playing without a piece. He's playing without a bishop. And so while he plays without a bishop, my bishop is thriving. It is glowing. It just did its hair. It just did its nails. It just got some new shoes. My bishop is glowing. Why couldn't I castle queenside legally? Ah, uh, Principia, you will like mine a lot more and you'll win a lot more. That's King is moving through checks. My opponent heard everything? Eh, I'm not scared. Oh, but now I can just sacrifice completely. Why don't I take queen? Because it was his move. Ooh. But then b5. Let's sacrifice. Let's sacrifice. I mean, we might as well open up the king, right? Take. I'm gonna take a bite of my bagel. I haven't eaten like half my bagel. The bagel... What? What? That loses a lot of stuff. That loses a lot of stuff. I... I... I what? What? 
That loses two pieces. I'm so confused. What just happened? Um, I don't know. I'm very confused. Okay, check. This is when people get very upset with me. They're like, stop criticizing. Stop being so condescending. I'm not being condescending. I'm just kind of shocked. That the guy just gave me two pieces for the cost of nothing. That's all I'm saying. Ah, so I wanted to go here. Let me check him, though. Wow. Brave. Rook? Look at these. Look at these million dollar rooks. Check. Do not trade the queen. You are winning. You will win. Oh. Let's go for the pretty checkmate. That's checkmate. That's checkmate. But so is this. That's checkmate as well. A nice crisscross applesauce checkmate. Nice win. Arakan Hillbilly. Now you have multiple options. In part one, there was advanced variation. We played knight c3, queen f3. We played exchange Karakan. Um, this is a super sneaky line with queen h5 if you want a new weapon. All right, I'm going to give Manuft another try. Hopefully Manuft is now in live chess. Manuft is still not in live chess. Manu FT, Manuft, I don't know what you're doing, but you're delaying my games and I don't like it. We are going to move to letter Pico. Or, dearest Nathan or Thrashix, can we just replace Manuft? Replace him with another 1100. Oh, I haven't played yet, maybe. I don't know what's going on. He's just not in live chess. Don't know what's going on. Let's go here. Guys, you gotta be in live chess. You gotta be in live chess on a PC. Letter Pico. And okay, Peter Leko is playing against me. This is a very funny username because actually it is my username. I think for this game I will play F4 Karokan because, and then I will play E5. And now knight to knight comes, and maybe d4 as well, and, and bishop out, and... He's playing... He's playing good. This, this is what you're supposed to do. Let me hold my center together. Let's try to play bishop d3. Well, not try to play, we're gonna play bishop d3. So we've put a bunch of pawns like this for more space, and we will trade off the light squared bishop and castle. He doesn't want me to do that, so he plays bishop g6. I'm going to castle, and then I will get my pieces out with bishop e3. Maybe drop back if you... Well, knight f5 is actually a mistake, but he might play it because he sees he's attacking my bishop. He takes, takes. Yeah, but don't I take this pawn now? That's kind of the point. Karo Khan players get too comfortable in c5 positions, yeah, and now I go here and he's completely lost. Because this is the whole problem with c3, c5, and now b4, is I glue the queenside shut, and this is a Karakhan player's worst nightmare. Mektor, if you are in the chat, I will play you instead, because Manu decided to, I don't know, jebate me? His existence? Um, I played there to go there. He stops it, so now I will drop back and maybe go to d4. Again, I'm not worried about this trade. I'm not worried about this. Mektor, are you in the chat? Or social or SoCal bias? Either SoCal bias or Mektor. I will play one of you next. You gotta let me know in, in, in chat right now if you're here. And if not, then that's it. We gotta end the, we gotta end it for today. Let's play knight d4. Luke Bomber, I'll play you. You were first. What's your chess.com name? Oh, never mind. SoCal Bias is here. I will play SoCal Bias next. Luke, Luke I appreciate it, but, but SoCal was first. So I will play, um, I will play against SoCal Bias.
That was a mouse slip by you? Oh, that's energetic. That's really funny. High energetic. B6. I don't want to take. I can push this guy and I'm defending with my knight. Look at the, the, the gorgeous, go, go, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. How about f5 takes here and queen g3. Am I, am I mating there? I also can glue this pawn here forever with a4, b5. And then I can move my knight. b5 is bad because takes, takes, just takes my pawn. My knight has to guard or a pawn has to guard. Um... What do I play? F5, takes, takes, can't take because of here. What about G6? Then I take, then he takes. Play Rook F6. That's possible, possible. Let's play knight takes. Takes. Also, just going this way looks scary for black, but I'm not so sure it works because after king g7, I can't take. He's got that well guarded. Uh, queen h6. Take. Up. Looking for mate. I mean, I can just go back. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I go back. Maybe I give a check. Well, when you don't know, just guess. Just go here. I want, I want to keep this pawn protected. Like, and, and if I trade, then... This, uh, uh, queen g3 was also a good move. Uh, uh, but queen g3 doesn't threaten anything. Whoa, that's a bad move, because now I go here. Oh. This is not good. Yeah, he pins me, but so what? <laughs> I'm, I'm well protected. But this is really good for me. Now I'll play a4, and uh, you will not destroy my pawn chain. So, once I have the indestructible pawn chain, we'll bring my second rook to guard my center. Maybe he plays f6, actually. It's kind of it's not, not so... He can fight me, but it's not going to work. He can fight, though. He does play it. Let's go here. Tough position. How about Queen E5? Yeah, this guy's like really fighting. I don't, I don't like it. Just lose. Just lose. It's so much easier that way. He's gonna go here and take. I mean, I'm gonna take. Ugh. But of course the pass pawns are... Oh, well that's... That's a GG. That's a GG. I mean, you, you cannot survive with no queen. Mm. Oh, but he's threatening to take because I'm pinned. Oh, wait, no, he's not. No, he's not. Oh, no, I hung my pawn because, oh, my, oh, man, wait. I'm so bad. I can't believe I hung this. So bad.
It's making a queen, basically. Yeah, here, 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 here. That's all you gotta do. This pawn is the golden ticket. I mean, he also can go here and I make a queen. But another way to do it is take, take, rook d1, rook d8, and we win. All right, so Calbias, make sure you're in your live chest on a PC, please. And so the problem is that when the king and the rook are so far apart, you have rook d8 and you win. And now, I've been saying, make a second queen. And life is good. Make sure you're giving checks so it's not stalemate. Give a check. Give a check. Give a check. Don't push this pawn. That would be stalemate. Made in one. Queens are extremely powerful. GG. F4 is an interesting Karakan approach. I'm just trying to play different stuff because a lot of people are playing C6 against me. Oh, did I say something stupid? What did I say? Oh. You guys are right. Wow. I forgot these pawns even existed. I mean, he didn't move them. I just forgot they existed. I just thought this was stalemate. He can't move his king, but he can't move his pawn. Yeah, I could, I could have made a third queen and checkmate. That's why you watch. So we beat Letter Pico. And now we will finish our run today by playing against SoCal Bias. Again. Big center against the Karo player. They're going to play c5. And trying to play c3 and bishop e3 will be the way to do that. It's a long game, so it might be better uh, for players that like positional games. Here we go. Scandinavian. Blackmar Deemer Gambit. Now it's the Karakhan. Whoa. Let's play this against the Karakhan. F3. I guess we'll castle queenside. We saw this structure when the guy played d6, knight f6, play knight c3, bishop e3, queen d2, long castle, h4, h5, take. You know, some bishop h6 takes, queen takes, and then I'll checkmate when the king castles. h4 will make an appearance, yes. Okay, queen d2. Isn't fantasy variation good for black? Nah. Basically wins by force for white. Just kidding. It's just the variation. Can't be that bad for black. Come on. What is this scattered development? Like, why, why not knight here in castle? Okay. I, I said that I was gonna play h4, h5. So I can't play I can't take on d5. That's the problem. You know? I promised that I would play h4, h5 and checkmate on the king side. I have to do this now. I'm sorry. 
I have to do this. I mean, I have to punish this. You cannot open the center when your king is like this. I mean, come on, guy. What are, what are we doing here? Okay, he's playing badly because he's from California. Then again, Hikaru lives in California now, so I guess, I guess that doesn't make that much sense. Let's take... I know, so toxic. So toxic. Bishop g5? Again, when your opponent has a king in the center, you shouldn't make slow moves like bishop c4. This is better now. Better now. Can I get demonetized for quoting a Post Malone song? Bishop g5, and the idea is to punish him. see this that's what I said okay that wins a queen that's probably the easiest now I am giving away a rook and a bishop for it Bring my bishop out. I could check him. I could take. I have a lot of decent moves, but I want to develop and I want to get my rook in the game. With the king stuck in the center, that's a good move. Not sarcasm, but I promised you guys h5, so we're gonna get h5. Something like this. I promised. Oh no, gentlemen. Getting me frustrated, man. King is so open. Bring this bishop back. It's a hanging rook. Let's not lose the rook. Or can I? That's actually a very good move. I'm going to prevent him from taking me? No, I won't. I'm going to be really mean for a second. Don't tell him. Don't tell my opponent, please. So the idea is I'm pinning him to him. To, to I'm, I'm pinning him to him. Okay, there you go. That's the premium chess content that we come here for. I'm, pre I'm pinning him to him. Oh. Good move. Also not sarcasm. I guess we have to just go here. goes here. I don't know. It's actually a pretty interesting position. Uh-huh. Still plenty of play for my opponent. He's not mating me, luckily. But he will he could play this move. Gotta cover mate. Eh, there you go. 92. Okay. That covers checkmate by moving my knight. I could have also made a space like this. Even blocked with the bishop because the trade is good for me, but a little dangerous. He had a cool move. It didn't work, but he did have a cool move. Okay, that attacks my queen. So the easiest thing is I just go here. Yeah, he could have done this, which was... Okay, now he can't do anything because I'm just going to... Take his bishop, and that's mate. But he did have one cool move, which is also why you should look for checks as much as possible. Nice. Okay. 
But I'm very upset with him. I mean, I played the fantasy variation, and what the fantasy variation tries to do is get a big center, play knight, bishop, uh, queen, and castle. And he just played weird moves. Like, this is not good. I mean, you're, you're, you should not open the position like this when your king is... I mean, you gotta play, like, you know, knight e7 and at least try to castle before you play aggressively, but... He fought back. It's just that if he filled in the blanks of, you know, his opening, doesn't just get these kind of positions. Um, ah, you watched my 10-minute guide, and that's all you remember, G6. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, just remembering G6's stuff. No, knight D7 is not good. You should play E6, knight D7, and castles. It's my fault. I'll take the responsibility. Um, but yeah, you need you need to you. I I, I definitely don't recommend playing like this. <laughs> That's not good. Um, so yeah, I'll take the blame. Don't worry. Um, but definitely better to develop your kingside pieces and then look for c5 or e5 or things like this. Um, but that's all for today. Uh, we played like seven or eight games against about a thousand to you know high twelve hundreds. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Um, you can check out more videos on that side. Uh, and if you're not subscribed yet, give the video a thumbs up if you made it this far. You guys are amazing. And also shout out to the live audience. Peace!